and many different contingents here from all different groups uh, are rallying here today to protest the G8. Some commies, some trade unionists, some who are here against fracking, some to free Bradley Manning, others to close down Gitmo. It's really just an array of different groups and perspective, a huge mixture of people. Uh, the organizers estimate that there's about 2,000 people, as you can see all the way going down, down this street, that this is a significant protest here. Uh, the mobile police uh, van slash tank slash surveillance vehicle with the microphone is up right there, if you could see it. Never seen one of those at a protest, but these are very common here in Belfast which is known for having very uh, violent demonstrations and violent protests. There's a group of counter-protesters just directly to the left of me right now. Uh, a large number of riot police officers are surrounding the small group, which is pro-nationalist, pro-English. Uh, and they even have Israeli flags in there to make sure that the two groups don't clash and come together, but they're really small in significance of the major crowd that is here. Again, this rally was organized by the trade unions who got a permit and specifically asked to have a peaceful rally. So far it has been, but we will continue live streaming for you and show you exactly how things unfold. Without us they are nothing, they have no power and no ends with nurses. Without us they are nothing, they have no power and no influence for me. Do you not like it that you, President Obama, continue to wage the discredited war of terror of your predecessor. Every time you, President Obama, approve a breach in international law, you, work, you make the world a more lawless place, and by virtue of that, you make it a more dangerous place for us all. President Obama, Guantanamo Bay is an embarrassment to you and your country, and an affront to justice. President Obama, we love your rhetoric about closing Guantanamo, but your inaction to hold to your promises, that shames you, and really shames your administration. President Obama, close Guantanamo. We certainly are, and we're proud to organize and conduct a peaceful demonstration. Alright, so this is Luke. We are changed on Twitter reporting live to you here in Belfast. Obviously the first demonstration has ended here. It was a pro-trade union rally organized, permitted. Uh, no major acts of violence have yet have happened, even though the mainstream media has been saying that there will be violence here. There has not been any violence here. The organizers have made sure of that. There's a huge police presence all over Belfast right now. Lots of police officers, lots of mobile police vans with surveillance cameras on them. So it is very interesting to see the huge amount of police. Every G8, every protest, there is major arrests. There are major demonstrations. This is our first one. It, there's still Still so many more to come, so stay tuned. Uh, the best way to find out live picture updates, YouTube videos, and also the live video feed that you're watching right now is by going to twitter.com forward slash Luke We Are Change. Luke We Are Change on Twitter. That's the best way to find out what's going on. WeAreChange.org is the main website. We will have HD videos and reports from what's happening here on youtube.com forward slash We Are Change. It's not the end of the day for us. There's still other rallies. There's still other events. There are going to be taking place here today. So stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. It's been a very rainy, exhausting day, but uh, luckily we're still able to do our job for you. So thank Thank you for allowing us. Thank you. Thank you for donating. Thank you for supporting us. This wouldn't be possible without you. Thank you again so much for watching. Well, let me turn this little broadcasting off, and we will be back up later. What kind of guns are those that the cops have? I, I could, they don't usually have them out. Is the thing they yeah. usually just because Northern Ireland is just like they're not usually like an armed police force. Yeah, yeah, yeah special armed and units that they have to call for these sort yeah. of things, but. Yeah, there's a lot of there's, there's like there's a big squad and one of them has an automatic machine gun yeah. on them. Usually there's just one or two within the larger crowds of them, but it is usually we don't see automatic live fire machine guns yeah. at protests. But this is I guess no, Belfast. Not when they're just holding them either, I guess. 
usually a lot of less lethal munitions uh you know the gases yeah. the rubber bullets we get rubber bullets too a lot but not rubber yeah no, no, water no water cannons yeah there was a lot of uh riding just in the in the winter it was all outside my street as well i was i was filming and stuff I was so the flag. yeah flag protest stupidest thing yeah. the, the story goes um we took the union jack off city hall and any excuse and then there was riots for like two months straight because wow. of that because they wanted the union flag, flag back, back up, up there yeah. Hmm. Just a flag, you know. Yeah. Do you guys want to do journalism? And I love the day I like it. What's like today? It just gives you an excitement for it. Yeah. It? Then what's stopping you? We have to get this course done first, and then. You know. Like yeah. I mean, one thing I did when I was going to college, I was like, I went to school, went through the course, and I was like, this is. I'm not gonna wait four years. I yeah, said, yeah, screw yeah. it. You know, I went to Kinko's. You did both. Yeah, I went to like a Staples or Kinko's, and I was like, I got a press pass made up on Photoshop, printed it out, <laughs> and then just I started going to different events that I saw press were at, and I just got in there with a the piece of paper, and then I just went went up to the older guys with the big video cameras, and I started talking to them, seeing if they wanted help. And then I would help them with like minor things like holding their equipment or whatever. And then they would give me tips on what I should do and how, you know, where to find the events, how to get in there, how to do this and that. So that's pretty much how I learned, you know. Yeah. But just because you're in university, don't let anything stop you. Uh, you know, I know they let you rent equipment, but even if they don't let you rent equipment, try to work with what you have, you yeah. know. Like, like let, let me just see the camera you have now, if that's all right. Duct this is together. <laughs> it, it, it's a, it's it's alright. It still it still shoots video. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the only thing I matter. I've got a better one, but I didn't really want to risk it today. Yeah. It has tapes as well. Yeah. So yeah. Tapes tapes are hard, but even some, with something like this, right? It still shoots good video. Yeah. But one thing that's important about little cameras, you need to stabilize them. Yeah. You yeah. don't stabilize them and shaking. You're just holding it. It, it, it the video is gone. Like, Got a like I have this thing for 15 American dollars. It's 15 bucks. You know, yeah. you can hold it on there as a tripod mount. You I can, can screw it on. Yeah, yeah. Could, I could screw it on here like this, right? Yeah. Keep it really steady. Now, once it's really steady, you know, you yeah. just get the perfect calm shot. And it's and for YouTube, the video compresses it so much, so it doesn't matter if it's bad quality. But another thing I would recommend is when you're working with a camera like this you need good audio yeah so one thing i started doing when i started out before i had the expensive microphones before i had everything else what i do is i just grab my phone and on i don't know if you have a droid or a smartphone but in every smartphone there's an audio recorder or you could download an app and like say you want to interview somebody you could have something like this and then you just hold up the yeah. microphone and then speak to them and then the audio is crystal clear I use this in some interviews too, and nobody even noticed I had a phone on me. And then you get clear video, that's calm, and then bam, you, you know, you, you got it. So definitely play around with it. And you know, one thing one thing I could offer is if if you guys want to shoot videos, you could send them to me just by emailing me, and I could give you feedback. Yeah. Like, hey, I thought this video was bad because of this. I thought this video was good because of this. This is how you do it. And if you guys would want to, I could put it on the main We Are Change channel, promoting your website or your Twitter and your Facebook, and help you get that audience start. Help yeah. you get the yeah, that's really good. the people who don't you know know of the new guys. We have the audience there. We need more content. We would give you exposure, a hundred percent of whatever ad money there is from it. And then in exchange, we get more videos. We get more subscribers because they see a bigger channel. So it's kind of, I'm giving you whatever I have, you guys can shoot whatever you have. And then, I already have videos from January with the riots and stuff. I have them on YouTube, I have like six yeah. or seven, but you know, I have like 300, 400 views max because yeah. I can't really get the, the word out, the exposure out. The right exposure, now. yeah, that's the hardest part. Starting off is the hardest part, getting your name out there. But one thing I want to do is build like a, whole new media platform yeah. where people all over all the world, the world yeah. 
are able to get not only you know their videos out there to a larger crowd, but also prop up other independent journalists. So if you guys want to do that, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. That, you know, you, I'll give you my email and then we'll be in contact from there. You know, but I think th the more we kind of democratize what we have to everybody, yeah. the better off all yeah. of us will be. You know. Uh, and then later on, I could give you, if I, if I find events in Belfast, I'll send yeah. you the events or, you know, tips and recommendations or if something happens, we could always be in contact. But I think I th that holds us back a bit because there's nothing really happens here. Like, this is probably... This is the biggest thing in history <laughs> yeah. to happen in Belfast. But, but even the riots that happened yeah. Yeah. last... June? January. Yeah. Or some last summer as well. But Even with the riots back. that happened in January, just being there, providing coverage of it, video of it, interviewing the people involved, finding yeah. out why they're rioting, having a nice, concise, good video well put together of the rioting and people saying, this is why we're rioting, that's breaking news. Yeah. yeah. Covering that, people want to see that. And um, then... I was going to say, also, it doesn't have to be something like some of our best things just happen to be a small story that we yeah. heard about someone that we met through word of mouth and that's become one of our biggest videos because it's such like a perfect story, you know? Yeah. It could be, it could just be just knowing somebody that has that went through something. Or just even talking to random people in the streets. Like, yeah. what do you think of this? What do you think of this? What you know like tapping into the mainstream and seeing what did people really think and getting them, them to think too by showing them different information. Yeah. You know, if, if that could happen, you know, even though there may not be a lot going on, it doesn't have to stop you. Like, the, the media still reports yeah. every day, 10 o'clock. Right, yeah. They find something, you know, and you could very easily... It doesn't have to be anything related with conspiracies or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. or it, it could be something local, human, that could s still speak to the world, you know. So you never know what you're going to get. And... The more you just keep looking for it, the more it finds you. So just looking in newspapers and colleges and or even like finding out an interesting professor in your university that really sticks out and is teaching something that you guys think the world should know. Yeah. Going on and interviewing him and saying, you know, this is my evidence, this is what I found, this is my story, this is what I want to tell everybody. Something like that is powerful. Or how to videos or anything. So, you know, the possibilities are endless in media. You just have to find them, and and there's there's a million stories a day that could go mainstream, but the only way you can is if other people start doing them. So, so I'm definitely looking forward to seeing some of your stuff. And so, if I were to email you one of the videos you took in January or something, for yeah. example, could you like give me pointers and stuff and what yeah. to do next time if it's happens again and things like that? Yeah, let's definitely do that. And then when something breaks or something new happens, we have to get it. Tell us about what you just come back with uh, a great story we call the Potemkin Village. Tell us about it, and then we'll, let's play the video first. We'll cut to the video, then we'll talk about it. Okay? Let's cut to that video. All right. Wow, that is says a whole lot. Talk a little bit about that. I mean, it just shows you what framework the government refers to. Probably. Sorry. Can you stop from the? Okay, from the pickup. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Three. Okay. Not China, this is not Nazi Germany, and we have a 